Okay, so we're out here and we are installing a brand new garage door opener motor to this garage door. Now this garage door does not have safety sensors. Let me show you. See, no safety sensors on this side or the other side. But I don't know if you can tell, these are pretty high vaulted ceilings. So do I really want to get on top of a ladder and staple sensor wire up to this high ceiling where I might get dizzy due to an earthquake, combust into flames while an alien pops out of my chest, falling to my death? Okay, I know at least one of those scenarios wasn't realistic. I think it was the one about the earthquake. Well, in this video, we're gonna provide you a pro tip on installing safety sensor wiring to the rail assembly on a LiftMaster garage door opener motor instead of having to get on a ladder to staple onto that high ceiling. And we're gonna be utilizing these. These are LiftMaster safety wire retainer strips. Let's party. Okay, so we have installed the motor. That is, we've already hung the motor. I've got the wall button on. The last thing I pretty much need, aside from all the small little details, is installing the safety sensors. Of course, these are LiftMaster safety sensors, and it, they do require um, a bracket to be installed either onto the track or you can install them onto the wall. And you simply want to install your safety sensors onto the actual bracket. Now, some guys like to make these little squiggly curly cues. They call them pigtails, they call them uh, swigglies. At any event, the idea is that giving yourself a little bit of slack should help with the wire not binding, with the wire not pulling too much on the safety sensor. It's just best to kind of give yourself a little bit of play there. What we're going to do, and because again, because we have these high vaulted ceilings, we don't want to tack on the safety sensor wire up to the ceiling. It's at least probably about 14, um, I'm going to say about 14 feet from the floor to the ceiling. At any rate, it's just, you know, dangerous to get on an A ladder and you're having to uh, go up and down. Remember, we always want to work smarter and it's smarter to, when installing the safety wires to the safety sensor or the wires to the safety sensor. We're gonna utilize this strip right here, this retainer strip from LiftMaster. These things are pretty genius. So on the T-rail assembly, we're gonna tack this onto the T-rail and then from there, we're actually going to put the sensor wire in this little groove. So I don't just, I don't know if you can see how that works, but basically this portion is gonna go onto the T-rail and then this, the wires will go up here and it'll be seamless and we're gonna basically run them from where they need to be on the track assembly, up and over, down the rail and call it a day. Hey party people, Santiago from SOS Garage Door Service, and if you're getting any value out of this video, please hit that like button. Now it's possible that you're thinking, well, does Genie offer a similar solution to their rail assemblies? And the simple answer is no. But the reason is because they approach their rail assembly very differently. They use a C-style or a C-channel type rail assembly, where basically the top of the rail assembly is pretty much flat. They even provide you these little plastic clip-on adhesives. I know you can't see that, but uh, basically you would set this on top of the rail assembly and what it does is that it allow that the wire can go through this little channel right here where you can easily place it above the rail assembly. It doesn't become loose in most cases, but you know, it is a good solution with regards to the Genie contractor rail assembly. Okay, so now we have our safety sensor wire stapled onto our header. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna make sure that our wires are nice and straight because we will be applying the safety sensor wire retainer strip on the T-channel and then we'll be putting the wires inside here. So let's do that now. Okay, as you can tell, it's not too hard to apply onto the T 
rail assembly. But if you notice, we got a little bit more excess than we need. These are about five feet strips that you can apply onto your rail assembly. On a seven foot rail, you're gonna have a little bit of uh, um, excess. On the eight foot rail, I think it'll just work fine. Some guys like to take just one strip and cut it into five pieces, put the sensor wire in, and then you see gaps of the sensor wire running onto the rail assembly. Didn't want to do that for this specific job, mainly because I like my installs to be a lot more cleaner. Okay, so we've made our curly cue here. We're wired up. Uh, all we really need to do is just do the final touches. Of course, we're gonna power the unit, but then we're gonna focus on our sensors. And as you can tell, that uh, strip, man, it looks seamless, doesn't it? It's like it's a part of the rail assembly. Oops, yeah, you gotta check if it's coming out or not. That's good that we saw that. There we go. So it's nice and snug in there. I wonder if, over time, the vibrations might affect it. I'm not 100% sure because I rarely see these used. So they're sp for specific applications, again, to number one, uh, work safely in a high voltage ceiling. If you don't have the necessary ladders to tack on the safety wires up above, uh, then this is the best solution to go with. Uh, number two, it is cleaner. And uh, number three, at the same time, it's going to save you time with your installation. Uh, having to staple on up there would take a lot of up and down. And again, there's a safety factor to it as well. Uh, and I really don't think most customers like seeing wires up above. At any rate, um, this type of wiring solution, or I should say this type of strip for your safety sensor wire solution is much more practical in these certain situations. It's not gonna be for everyone, but if you're a do-it-yourselfer, these wire retainer strips, you know, are, should be easily found. You should be able to get them and again, apply them onto your rail assembly, especially when you have a T-channel rail assembly. Now, if you have an I-beam or an I-rail assembly, this is for more of your uh, heavy-duty LiftMaster motors, this probably won't work. Um, maybe if you tack it onto the side, I don't know, I haven't seen that just yet, uh, but we're doing it on the T-channel rail, so uh, this is what, uh, what we're doing now, and uh, hopefully it's something you wanna do. So the solution that we're providing you in this video strictly and specifically applies to the dealer contractor garage door opener motor. That is the garage door opener motor that comes with a solid state, one piece rail assembly. Now, if you're thinking about uh, a solution for the Chamberlain retail garage door openers, or in some of the Genie retail garage door openers, specifically the chain drive and the belt drive, well, there does not exist a solution like this type for those rail assemblies. They're simply not designed for it. And thus, it's one of the main reasons why I prefer to go with a solid state, one piece rail assembly. So if this solution, that is the LiftMaster Safety Sensor Wire Retainer Strip sounds like a party to you, well, I'll leave some links in the description. Now granted, if you have a retail rail assembly, you can always switch it out to a contractor version rail assembly. You would just have to reach out to your local contractor to make that happen. Of course, the pro tips, techniques, and ideas in these videos should not be considered law or infallible. Why? Because I am nobody. That's going to be it for this one, party people. I want to thank you so much for parting with me. Now, if you haven't yet, please hit that like button. Also, check out this other video right here that can provide you more pro tips and tech reviews for all your residential garage store needs. And as always, y'all stay safe.